Right, morning y'all, coffee made. Slightly different video today, so it won't appeal to everybody, but I get this question quite a lot actually, how to set up your golf bag. I've got a new golf bag, because my old one, the zip's gone on it. So I'm gonna set up a new golf bag, and I'm gonna show you what I would do if I was playing competitive golf, so more serious golf than I play. How to set up your golf bag. Right, stage one is we need to get everything out and off this bag. So let's take all the clubs out and see what other rubbish comes out. Right, there's everything out. Let's see what's come out and what's gonna go back in. Uh, this bag has gone all around the world with me, served me well. Unfortunately, I ripped the zip accidentally. Let's get the new bag in. Right, new bag in. Thank you, Strixon. I don't know what this bit is. Let's have a look what this does. What is this? Oh, that's the rain hood. Stuffed in the top, never seen that before. So that's your rain hood, which we'll come to. Right, so we're ready to construct. So put clubs back in, work out what goes in. You see I've got a lot of gloves here and other bits of rubbish. First thing I'm gonna start with is I know I'm a little bit low on tees. I haven't got many tees. Now I'm making sure I've got ball marker. I've got a pitchfork. These are things you should have on a golf course. I have a few pitchforks because you just, I just don't want to get on a course and not have one. You can use a tee, but pitchfork is better. I don't know how many I actually have. I've actually got a pencil in here as well. If I was playing competitively, which I don't anymore, but if I was, I would definitely have two, three, four pencils kicking around because you just need them. And it's like when you really need them, you forget them there. So I need some more tees, which I'm going to go and get. I've got ball markers and I've got my pitchforks. Let's just go and get a few more tees. So I'm going to fill the tees up with these and I'm going to use more of these going forward. These are bamboo tees, so in effect they're going to degrade. If you think about the tees that we use, a lot of plastic going on. The more we can try and use less plastic, I think, on the golf course. So bamboo tees, I think they're quite cool. Uh, the bamboo base, I don't know if that's who makes them, but these are going to go in as my replenished tees. And to be honest with you, most of the other tees I've got in there are ones I don't really use anymore. You know, they're like... The ones we pick up on our travels that are just kind of quite fun to keep. So pitchforks, ball marker tees, ready to go. Going to put them in this front pocket. Next thing I'm going to do is look at the golf balls I've got. And I wouldn't have this if I was competing. You're going to notice I've got a few different balls. So I've got Z Star here, yellow with my face on. I've got a Z Star, this is the Diamond Ball, and this is the Z Star XV. The reason I have a few different balls is I like just testing different ones as I go. If I was playing in a competition, I would definitely just be bringing out the Z Stars. So leaving the other ones away, there's a Z Star. That's actually a Z Star, and that's a Z Star as well. So these wouldn't go in my bag if I was competing. Now, what you also see is that one's used. That one's been hit. That's new, that's new, that's new, they're new. So I've got five new, which is plenty of new for a round. And I would keep the hit ones here. And to be fair, I'd probably get a few more new ones. I'd maybe get a sleeve of three more new and then keep these hit ones for chipping around the green, hitting into nets. You know, you get some courses and there's nets, chipping greens, where I don't want to use, I want a brand new ball on the course. So I would definitely keep some of these older balls just for those kind of practical things as you're warming up. So for now, I'm going to put all these in. And these for me actually are going to go in this side pocket here. The reason being is because I put this, there's another bit of bag on a trolley when I film sometimes. So I'm putting these in the side pocket. More rubbish. Golf World needs to calm down with its packaging, doesn't it? Take some responsibilities. Now I'm gonna put these in because I don't play competitively and I'll use these as we go around as I film as spare balls hit another shot for, you know, to get the right shot, those kind of things. So I will have them in there, but I wouldn't if I was playing. Right, next, should we do the gloves? A lot of gloves came out. So I've got these weather gloves, which I put in there just in case they get caught in the rain, but I don't really, if I was competing, absolutely would have weather pair in there for the rain. Now, I'm gonna look at the gloves 
and see which ones have got any holes in. So this one has a hole in, so it's going out. It's gone. It's in there because I've just popped it in. Here's another one with a hole in, gone. So I want to get rid of the rubbish ones. So that one can stay, that one can stay, and that one's good. So I've got one brand new and I've got one in the packaging here as well, which I'm gonna take out again. More packaging for the bin, great. So I've got two new ones and if I was competing, I'd want a minimum of two new. I'd probably have three in my bag. And then these ones I would be using maybe to warm up and on practice rounds, those kind of things. And the wet weather ones if I get caught because they do work really well if you do get caught in the rain. I'm lucky enough I don't plan the rain because the camera doesn't like it as well as me. So these can all go back in. These will go in top with the T's. Now, I also have, and not on brand, it happens to be a Callaway one, um, but it fits my driver. I have one of these keys, just in case I need to change the neck on my driver at any point as well, because I coach, obviously I go places where we talk about clubs and if people want to just tweak it, they often don't bring theirs. So I've got a key as well, just for adjusting that. I mean, I don't adjust mine, really but I could have a broken shaft as I travel and I could unscrew this and get another shaft if they stock Strixen at the place I go, those kind of ideas. Very handy to keep in your bag. So that's going in. That's gonna go in with the golf balls. Now, a few other bits in here. This is a funny one. So I've got sun cream, because you need to protect yourselves on the course, people. Um, this one's very old, so this one's actually going to go in the bin because it's probably out of date. I've got two new ones. You notice how I've got this one in a bag. So this one's going to go back for home use. This one's going to stay in my bag, but in a bag. And the reason I put it in my bag is if you get a leak, anything like that, this stuff obviously is so greasy, it can absolutely wreck your whole bag. So in a bag is quite a safe thing to do, especially when we're traveling and things get pressurized and unpressurized, those kind of ideas. Obviously in the current world climate as well, you never know where you go where you might need a mask. So I've also got a mask in there at all times. The clips that go with my shot scope range finder, so that's going to go back in my bag. The range finder is going to go back on my bag as well. I've also got, and this is quite handy for anyone who does travel if they play golf, I've got one of these, this is an old somewhere key card for a hotel room. These are quite good to put in, in those bits where they need them for the electricity to go on. So it's quite good to have spare ones of these, so I keep that. I've got an old water, I'm going to chuck it because it's old, but always make sure you've got enough water in your golf bag. The amount of guys I see out on a golf course who are just getting dehydrated, dehydrated as they go, even drinking beers, just drink plenty of water. You can get warm, you're doing an activity, stay hydrated, it's good for your body and your mind. Now let's set some clubs up, put them back in. So you're going to notice that my bag is divided here and it's really basic I'm sure most of you know this but if you don't this is something quite good for you to do I'm going to put my wedges in the bottom I'm also going to put my putter here sometimes I put my putter in the top but it can grab me this handles in a different place so I am actually going to put the putter back in the top and then what I'm going to do is keep appropriate clubs together so pitching wedge nine eight seven it's a real basic rule of thumb, but I've got the shorter clubs at the bottom and then grouping together the longers going up, longers into the middle here, and then right at the top, my longest clubs and my putter that I pull most often. So keeping your bag organized this way for some people is really important. I kind of try to do it when I get out playing, they get mixed up a bit and I'm not fussed, but I certainly start the day and much more that way. So that's my bag set up. I've also got the rain hood here, which you could put on top. I'm not a big fan of a rain hood. If I'm playing in the rain, I would use it more. But to be fair, if I was playing in the rain, I'd put that bag on a trolley and have a different bag. I wouldn't be carrying probably, but I will keep this. It's quite good for carrying. Uh, uh, and it's quite good for if you go away. It's quite good in cars. If you share cars with lots of bags and things drop out. So it's quite good for just keeping everything together. So I will keep that on the bag at all times. And then two last things to think about. One is I'm going to look at the strap, because this is a double strap. So trying to make sure I've got the balance in the right place. I will make this one a little shorter. I'd like this a little bit more up there. So base of the back I'm aiming for. So I want the clubs basically at the base of my back. Once that's in place, basically 
I've got my bag set up. Now, last thing that I would advise for you guys and girls to think about and do, and I don't do this because I do would be doing this if I played. So the golf balls I use, this is a used one, but I've got my face on them. So my ball, even though it's a Strix and Z style, it's used by lots of people. I know this is my one because it's got my face on it. Now, when I used to play competitively and I didn't have my face on a golf ball, I would mark the ball. So I would use a series of dots, call these a badly drawn on, that's unique to me. And I'm doing that just with a Sharpie. So having a Sharpie in your bag so you can mark up some golf balls so when you do play, you're not just using a generic ball, you're using one that you can identify. It's absolutely crucial if you're playing in competitions. The amount of times I've played with people is you're looking for their ball and you ask them what they're using and they don't actually remember. Is it a two you're using? Oh, I can't remember. And then in turn, which is fair, like I don't always remember what number ball I've got. Um, and without the markings on, like they literally don't remember even what make it is, you know, as in is it's a Z star or an XV, those kind of things. And that's another little idea. Having one brand of ball, like I said in earlier, so not only one brand, but one make within that brand will make that all much simpler. There's my golf bag. That's how I set it up. How do you set it up? What am I missing? In the comments down below, let me know. This isn't gonna change the world, this video, but hopefully someone out there gets an idea how to be a little bit more organized on the golf course. Thanks for watching.